like that's we just what I said. If a woman botches, the internet wants them fired. If a guy botches, then it's find it funny. Um, yeah, but if a if a, a guy botches, okay, usually it's an accident. Sometimes when a girl botches, they're doing something that you were looking at what they were doing. And it's like, why did you think you could do that successfully when the level of the percentage of failure is probably very high? Based on your based on your body type and shape and your strength and everything, that, that that's what I look at when I see the women do stuff. They try to do all the moves the guys do, literally try to do all the moves the guys do, and just some of them are not physically built to do those moves. So when they botch a move like that, it's like that that's like dumb. That that'd be like you know like me trying to go and give like the the you know Paul White a suplex, and I pick him up and he falls on me and breaks my ankle or something. You know, it's just like it just doesn't make sense. They're they're, they're doing stuff that like logic would not dictate. That you're going to perform that move successfully sometimes because they're going beyond their limits and stuff, you know, of, of like you know, the the risk involved outweighs the chance of success. So if you botch like that, of course you des- you deserve fair criticism. And performing in front of the front of the cameras just like everybody else. Yeah, but I thought the Brie Bella didn't deserve all that shit. No, she probably didn't. Oh, yeah, well, see. But yeah, people yeah, yeah. that the, the the people that have never trained, never wrestled before, never never taken a class, never done anything, they've just read who's good and who's not, and you're reading from other people that have never trained, never wrestled, and stuff. Everything. This is the thing that's that's, that's that's fascinating. It's like, do you know who the best worker in our locker room was when I started back in 1995? Uh, no. The universe, the the boys thought this. This is like all the performers in the, the performers, the bookers, everybody as a worker. Do you know who the best worker was? Bobby Eaton? Nope, Brad Armstrong. Brad Armstrong was was universally known as the 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 best worker. And you know why he was the best worker? Because everything he did looked great. Everything he did that, that you that you did to him looked good because he sold great, and he was light as a feather. Meaning he made it look real, and he was barely touching you. That's why he was a great worker. You know what I'm saying? But now all of a sudden it's like you, you, these people are going and they're rating the matches and they're drawing this false result that like, oh, those guys must be great workers. And it's like sometimes the work isn't any good because they're beating the piss out of each other. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you're like, okay, that's not, that's not great work. It's maybe a good match to watch, but like you don't want everybody working like that because they're, they're not going to last because you're physically, you're going to get hurt. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so, so it's like, so work is a, uh, the, the, the people that have never worked, the dirt sheet writers that have never worked and stuff, and they, you hear them sometimes talk about what they think good work is, and they have no fucking clue. They just have no idea what they're talking about because that is not what work is. Work is to make it look as real as possible, as light as possible. That That is the, the perfect combination of work. Brad Armstrong, of course, the name of a famous porn director who was married to Jenna Jameson. But she, she's married to a porn director right now? Uh, used to be. Oh, used to be. But before Tito or after Tito? Uh, before Tito. Before Tito, right. Okay. But uh, just as we get to uh, the final question here, so that you can go uh, have a Google of uh, Jenna Jameson footage, uh, you worked, of course, at TNA for a long time. Uh, you maybe rubbed shoulders with, like, Dixie Carter. Uh, at the minute, AEW, my favorite, your favorite, is run by uh, Tony Khan. Or Khan or whatever the fuck his name is. Or as I seen somebody write on YouTube the other day, Tony can't draw a million viewers. But uh, the question uh, I've got to say is, he seems to be making a lot of the same mistakes that Dixie Carter made. Um, so who, in your opinion, is the... Like an example. Uh, she focused too much on ex-WWE names. She didn't... Uh, you gotta understand, Dick, Dixie maybe hired wrestlers and stuff like that, but she wasn't like in the day to day, you know. So, uh, but so, who do you think is uh, the the better uh, boss, Dixie Carter or Tony Khan? I got along with Dixie. I, I always got along with Dixie, and I always try to give her honest, fair advice if if we ever had discussions, you know. Because we'd be in the, the booking meeting sometimes. Like, it'd be like, she'd be complaining about stuff the dirt sheets wrote. The torch, right? And she'd be, like, wondering what to do. I said, I, I, go, I go go talk to him. 
I'd be like, talk to them. I go get, I go, if they're printing false version of the story, go get, you, at least you need to get, that's the only thing, you know, the only way to get your story out is on these, these dirt sheets these days. These guys kind of have a monopoly on, on the flow of information of the wrestling business. So I, I said, just talk to them. Give them, give them your version, of, give, give them the version of the story. Because she, she'd be upset when there'd be fake stories written about us. You know? But um, I don't have any idea what, what, I don't have no clue what Tony Khan does. Never spoken with them. He been, and then this is the thing is like I, I told everybody when AEW started, anybody that listens, right? And if you you know, you can go back on things I've talked about, and I don't think there's I think even you will agree that anybody there, there's not been anybody in the business that can plant his flag and be bright more than I have. Okay. I told everybody when AEW started, because they have guys in positions they've never been in before, they would have some probably growing pains. And they would probably be making some rookie mistakes. And I said, but they would probably figure out everything and sort things out, right? So the one thing they've gotten better at that I've seen and that they've improved, okay, is they're implementing, at least in some of the angles, good episodic storytelling, like if two guys are in an angle, every week we add and add and add to the elements of the angle and the characters react based on what happened the week before, what would you do this week and stuff. So they've done that good, right? Um, they've also had problems like production-wise, like they'll have vignettes airing during the split screen on commercial breaks and you can't hear what the guys are saying in the vignettes. It's so like that's a mistake. You know, it's, it's, they're, they're doing good things. They're doing. They're, 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 they're making errors, but they're doing certain things good. Which which what you'll see is so like, I think like after six months, they're showing promise. They're showing promise. Um, I will give them credit. I was like, you know, obviously there's there's certain philosophical things they do on their show that I would just vehemently disagree with, but you know they, they've kind of like put guys. They've kind of like taken their roster now and centralized it into the guys that they know that they can put in good, and, and put good TV on each week. You know, so I mean, I, I'll give them credit for I'll give them credit for that. I'm not gonna, you know, I, I'll the, the the one thing you can't really say about me is that, is that my criticism is always fair. You know, because I I call it like I see it. I'm not I'm not gonna call. There's no one thing you're never gonna get from me. If there's something I like, I'm not gonna lie and act like it wasn't any good. Mm. I'll tell you what I see. Then what's good, you know? So, but uh, Tony Khan does seem to be spending a lot of money. Like, and I get you have to spend money to make it, but it's like these are big fucking. Bro, you know, this is the thing. Anybody want to criticize for that? You have no idea what their financial, what the books look like. Everybody going, oh, they're spending too. The nobody has any idea what their financials look like. Until they, until you do, until you get some financial numbers back, everything and criticizing them for making st- mistakes financially. How do you know if you haven't seen the books? Well, I, I I know someone that has. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. Who? Brad Shepard. He's seen their books. <laughs> well, this is disco. Uh, I just want to thank you so much for uh, taking the time to do this for me. I genuinely think, and I've said this before, I ever. Uh, spoke to you before and ask anyone. I genuinely think you're the best wrestling podcast guy in the world. I think you're honest, you're funny, uh, and sexy. And, and, I'm, I, and the most important thing is I'm right. You quite often are right. I'm pretty sure that you said WrestleMania should be a two day event. Of course I did. That was like three years ago, I think I talked about that. Right, but eventually. I, Maybe two years ago, two to three years ago, because here's here was the point. With but between WrestleCon and like the what are there like sixty events going on that weekend or something like that? Some some stupid ridiculous number of shows. So the WWE has fans coming to town, and they're not even spending all their dollars on WWE. They're spending on all these other like you know. And I was just I was just saying to myself, I, I bet Vince McMahon figures this out. Okay, and maybe even does this. Maybe even does this. Friday night Hall of Fame. Actually, you know what? <clears throat> Saturday afternoon. Or Friday at Friday night. 
NXT. Saturday afternoon, Hall of Fame. Saturday night, WrestleMania Day 1. Sunday, WrestleMania Day 2. Because what you're doing is you're providing the A-list show four shows for people to pay for. And you're not giving them any time to go to anything else. Ultimately, see, that would be the reason they would do stuff like this is to get all the dollars. And instead of having people come in and their dollars are going somewhere else. You know? But think about that. WrestleMania is a seven-hour show. Why would you not – which is which is atrocious to watch. Like seven hours is just unacceptable, okay? Why not do two three-and-a-half-hour shows for twice the money? Mm. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's really not the. It's really you're getting paid for 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 this amount, okay? For for the, for the this amount, okay? You're getting paid double for this, and it's still the same amount of time. It just seems like common sense to me, you know. It is, but common sense is something you have, and a lot of great answers. And uh, because I here's just, the case, here's the thing too. What people don't realize is, is like you know, people are paying bottom dollar now for for, for the for the WWE pay per views. Like it used to be, you needed fifty bucks to watch it each month, six hundred dollars a year to watch all of them. All right. So the WWE, when when that was the model, the booking was a little bit better because you were trying to make money. The booking leading up to the pay per views, you're trying to make money. You so so. The, but now, as you've seen the the paper, it's only a, a, another event and a nine ninety nine monthly subscription. It's like they really don't. It's like you, you're not. There's not a lot of money you're trying to draw here. You've already got the money. It's like, how much more are we going to draw at 999 subscription? And I think what the problem is, and I think what they're seeing is, the potential is like you have enough people that know this thing is seven hours long, and they're just going to say, I'm not even going to bother with any of it. Mm. Even though like WrestleMania, WrestleMania I pick up, I start watching it like, um, what, what does the show start? 4 Eastern? And it ends like ten thirty. You know, it's r- ridiculous, right? I'll start watching it like like around five o'clock my time, like eight o'clock. Like like enough to watch like the last last five or six matches. You know, if there is one match I wanted to see, that I'll just go back and watch it on the network afterwards. But I'm not invested in seven watching wrestling. So to, to just to listen to people complain about the booking on the internet and rate the matches. You know, <laughs> but the. I, I think they only watch the complain, but uh, I, I hope that nobody listens to this to complain because you're always uh, honest with me, even though sometimes you, you work this silly gimmick where you don't find me hilarious. But uh, I want to. No, you do find me hilarious. Uh, you'll probably think about it later on. Uh, I just want to thank you so much for your time. I want you to go binge watch Total Divas while you can. You've got it's on the network, you've got the uh, the free time for a couple of days. And uh, wash your hands and take care. All right, take care.